the one inch punch is actually a method of Chinese Kung Fu of generating power. Uh, one inch punch is a catchy term made, you know, made up by Bruce Lee, which it actually is correct, but really there's all kinds of short power. I mean, you can use a short power palm strike, you can use you know, a half inch punch or a three inch punch. And some people call them a trick, it could be a trick, it could be an um, emotion, but it does the damage for what it is, it's pretty powerful. With your, with your wrist joint is the best way to start usually, and just flicking it, you know, uh, giving yourself like a flat target, and you use the three bottom knuckles here, and you just pop forward, take your time, no point in rushing it, make sure that your elbow's in your center, and just slowly over time, just keep working on, you know, a soft pad or a pad of beans, you know, and usually having a training partner, someone to hold something for you, is a good judge for how much power you're putting out, and you just, just keep doing it, keep doing it until you know you feel like you've got a decent amount of control. There's a certain amount of time that wrist strengthening takes place in your training too. That's a big part of it. Um, <clears throat> has to do with training the form. The traditional way mostly go into the internal aspects, the centering of the chi. Okay, Chinese medicine have this concept of qi circulation in the body and by developing the internal power, the internal qi, you develop the one inch punch. Uh, one is first through the practice of breathing or qi meditation, through breathing, visualization, developing power centers at certain parts of the body. That's the internal approach. Okay. Yeah. The external approach is more muscular and body alignment, power base, torque, generation. If you, a lot of fight starts with finger pointing and a lot of that stuff and from that finger pointing which is the closest to someone's solar plex, maybe a face, you can generate that with that one inch punch that will actually be your winning card. So let's say the person we attack, attack and the person kind of intercepts my punch, boom, boom, just that one inch punch comes in. Without pulling back, that's from a combat standpoint. <laughs> if you hit someone with a one, one inch punch, maybe on the surface you break the ribs. Internally, you might shock their internal system. Uh, you can rupture someone's spleen, you can damage their liver, you can bruise someone's heart. Something wrong with one of your vertebras, and someone strikes you really hard. The power is going to try to find an easy way out, and it'll go through that to the injury point. So, you know, in extreme cases, guys have been known to strike some of the front, and then it injures their back. You're hitting its vulnerable point. That's a, also the key too. But obviously, if you hit uh, this weakest man at the strongest point, you're not going to do any damage because he's got muscle protection. <laughs> In the Chinese movies, the one inch punch has always been showcased very well. However, Kill Pill Volume 2, the way that it was portrayed was okay, but it just visually it was not pleasing. Kill Bill, the way that the one-inch punch was portrayed was, um, was, you know, taking your skin off your knuckle and this is how it is. But it's not about that, it's the body mass that moves. It is not the callus on your knuckles that does the, does the damage. I would continue to teach the one-inch punch as part of my curriculum if the student get that far. If you learn how to apply short, shortest distance with the most powerful impact that you can generate, there's a pleasure because there's a huge discovery about, about uh, one inch movement. If you look at it in that context, it's, you know, it's got invaluable lessons, but if you look at it as a one trick pony, that's it, that's the end of that show, you know? 
you know, I think there's been a slight dip in all martial arts in general. Because you think 150, 200 years ago, people were training this system because that's all they had. That was their livelihood. They trained a lot harder than they do today. People tend to be a little bit lazier. Maybe that's why there's not that much interest in martial arts, because the kids would just play video games all night long. Why come and train and sweat and, you know, <laughs> be painful, right? You know, you got to think, we've been doing basically the same stuff until about 100 years ago, until the Industrial Revolution. That changed everything. People are sitting in front of computers, you know, and we haven't had time to catch up with that yet. That's a radical change. So I think the importance of getting back in touch with your body uh, is very high and has continued to become up more on the priority list for a lot of people. So I expect the martial arts to take actually, you know, I, I think they're already taking an upswing back up, you know, whether you got to, you know, because there's systems out there that are almost being lost and people don't want that to go away. So I think they're going to get better. The consequence of one inch punch that happened in Long Beach, for me at least, is it's, it's amazing. And I think it, it, it keeps opening doors. And I think that would be the future of one inch movement or one inch punch.